Jesus, we thank you for your body broken for us. And we rejoice in you this morning, for sure. And remember your body broken. So I break this bread this morning, remembering that broken body. And rejoicing absolutely in you. Because you're good. The book tells us a small sampling of the depth of your love. So we eat this this morning. Uh, we eat your flesh and we drink your blood. And we say, Jesus, we want to have completely and totally a part of you. <laughs> we want to make sure that we're lined up with you. And so we choose this morning to remember and to receive this. And then we want to release our faith, Lord, and say, yes, that by your stripes we are healed and made whole. So we say every sickness and every disease, every malady, every DNA, uh, hereditary disruption is well and whole in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. How wonderful you are, truly. I thank you for your blood poured out, that you made a propitiation for us on the mercy seat, and that you satisfied the requirements and the justice of our God. And you bought us back from the slave market of sin, and you redeemed us, and you set us free. And you declared us righteous and holy. And so we say, we drink this cup this morning in agreement with your declarations. And we say, we believe in the faith of Jesus. That he will never fail. And that he will never be found faithless. That even if we are, that he is never faithless. So our confidence is in you, Jesus. And we thank you that you are a great and faithful high priest that you ever liveth to make intercession for us. So we acknowledge that this morning. We agree with what your word says. And we appropriate everything you have for us today. Thank you, Father. We say yes. We want to have a heart that says yes, Father, to you always. Romans. <laughs> Where are we at? Chapter 4. He's going to tell some cool stuff here. He just made everybody a sinner. And then he said, we are just uh, 324, we are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So we have, he's saying we have been freely justified. We have been made innocent by the blood of the Lamb. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. So we talked a little bit yesterday about that void means it was never in effect because it was improperly made. So it, was the law never in effect and improperly made? No, the law was not improperly made, and it was in effect lawfully. That doesn't mean we have to keep it, though, because we can't, and Jesus fulfilled it. So he's saying that faith establishes the law. What shall we say then, that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath something of which to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward, not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, 
His faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness apart from works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. So he's saying, uh, Abraham, our father, the father of the Jewish nation, uh, what did he find according to the flesh? He found, when he made a covenant with, when God made a covenant with him, how did God do it? Uh, he knocked him out, right? He laid him out on the ground. Uh, where if Abraham was justified by works, he's got something to which to be proud of, to glory in. What said the scripture? Abraham believed God and it was counted. And then he makes a little comment in verse 4. He says, now if you work a job and get paid, that's not grace. That's debt. So grace is to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness. And David, then apparently in David had a revelation of this as well. Because he said, Blessed is the man whom the Lord will not impute sin. So once again, he's affirming that salvation, this, this awesome deliverance that Jesus did for the human race, it's available strictly by believing it, by accepting it, by a coming into agreement uh, with God that you are that the sacrifice of Jesus applies to you and that you you receive his offer. So, awesome. So Father, we thank you for Paul taking such great lengths to explain how this works because It was, a, it was an incredible revelation that you gave Paul. And I think, I think you, hit, you hid it. You kept it concealed in the Old Testament uh, so that the devil couldn't get in and mess this up. Because this is very important. <laughs> this, was the, this is what the whole universe was hinging on. Was Jesus going to be able to redeem the children back into himself. The whole universe was based on that. So uh, I think just like Jesus coming the first time was hidden and veiled, I think Jesus coming the second time, you've got some surprises for the devil. So I can't wait to see him. I can't wait uh, to see what you're going to reveal uh, to us and through us and in us. So, Father, I just I just worship you this morning. I praise you. I thank you. You're so wonderful. You're so awesome. And you've extended your love to us and included us in your family. And you rescued us. Uh, you bought us off the the auction block at the slave market of sin. <laughs> And you paid a price for us and redeemed us and bought us and uh, declared us righteous and holy. What a, what a wonderful privilege. What an awesome blessing and benefit you are to us. And so we just want to come back into your presence this morning and say good morning and thank you and bless you and you're so lovely. praise. We want to be diligent uh, and, and mindful of you today and uh, what a day this is that you have made for us and everything that you have uh, uh, spun into place thousands of years ago 
it's uh, still spinning and still going. And uh, it's just amazing. Our little, our little brains can't handle uh, all the details. So we're going to leave all that stuff up to you. All those details up to you. And we're just going to rest in your presence this morning. We're going to rest in the accomplished, finished work of the cross. That Jesus paid it all. And that there's nothing we owe this morning, God, except to love you. So what a privilege is that. Uh, that you extend relationship to us. And that's what your desire is. To us. Uh, what are you doing? Why don't you come and pray with us, please? Apply yourself. It's good discipline. We want to we want to focus our attention, Lord, on what you're telling us. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because I know we are we are entering into rare days. So we want to focus on you. And we want to make sure that our heart is listening. And uh, as you direct us and as you reveal things to us, we want to do that. Uh, and we want to make sure that we're careful to discipline our thoughts and uh, agree with you. Because when we do, that's when, that's when we have peace. That's when we have joy. That's when we have uh, rest. So you said to labor to enter into the rest. So that's what we want our uh, efforts to be today. Good morning, doctor. Huh? I say good morning, doctor. Doctor? Daughter. I didn't want to, we're, 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 anonymous. we're recording for YouTube, so um, I didn't want to use your name. But you could forget. But I could forget. <laughs> well, what can I say? It has happened before. I'm trying to I'm trying to pray. I'm not trying to remember all the rules. <laughs> so Lord, we just rejoice that you've made a way where there was no way. And that we can we can focus on being happy. We can focus on, on hearing your voice. And uh, I am excited. I, am, I do know that you're going to show us incredible things that uh, aren't even in the book, uh, that you didn't, you didn't list them. You didn't put it out there so the devil could find out about it. So I know you're, I know you're showing us uh, amazing things day by day. And uh, we want to be diligent to listen every day. And... Uh, I ask this, this morning that you uh, uh, speak to my wife and my son and my daughters, that, that your voice, would, they would hear it larger and louder than you ever, than they ever have before. And that we could encourage one another. We could speak life. We could speak uh, wisdom and knowledge and instruction and, and uh, be, uh, have our eyes open so that we can function better and uh, be more uh, directed in our efforts and our actions so that we don't waste any time, we don't waste any energy, we don't uh, spend money or, or whatever so that we are focused on uh, bringing your kingdom to come. And, and so we just declare that this morning. I say, kingdom of God come. And will of God be done on earth, just like it is in heaven, on in this earth, in our physical bodies, and then on this land uh, that surrounds our home. And then I declare it over this uh, the state of North Carolina, or the North Carolina, the land. And then our, uh, our whole continent, uh, the Americas. And I just thank you, Father. Are you having your way? And you, you're establishing as the body of Christ begins to wake up, <laughs> as, as we begin to be stirred by the Spirit, uh, 
we, we just keep hearing these prophetic words and these uh, people declaring that the, the word and the will and the ways of God are going to just sweep through this continent. That we're going to see signs and wonders. We're going to see uh, the mighty army of the Holy Spirit rise up and begin to run the race and begin to accomplish the will of God. So we know there's uh, dark darkness coming. The, the, you said that the, the, the night is coming when no man can work. So, so we want to, while it's still day, while it's still light, we want to work. We want to go out and do what you call us to do. We want to bless as many people as we can and encourage as many people as we can. We want to make sure that their hearts are, uh, are set free as well. So that's my desire, Father. And I say, here we are. Uh, use us. Use our family. Uh, we want to uh, work with you and participate with you. Um, and I thank you for giving us revelation. Thank you for speaking to our hearts in dreams and uh, visions and uh, prophetic words and uh, messages and sermons and uh, whatever else we have available to us, Lord. Uh, we want to listen carefully. We don't want to be uh, distracted <laughs> like the rest of the world is in, is in a fog, uh, an absolute fog, an unconscious as to what's happening around it. The enemy has per pervasively taken over the minds of the of the world. Practically, I guess there's I guess there's still a lot of people that aren't hooked into the system, whose brains aren't sucked in by the devil, but everybody else is certainly is. So we we ask uh, that you help us stay free from from any distractions or disruptions and uh, I speak against any kind of fear or worry or doubt that would try to come in and uh, steal peace from us today so I thank you for giving us strength and courage to hear your voice and to do what you called us to do um, I thank you for giving us joy uh, you said the kingdom of God is righteousness peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. And so I know I know we haven't been as joyful as we could be. Uh, so I ask your Holy Spirit to help us understand how to function in joy. So that we uh, the, the word says the joy of the Lord is our strength. So Father we want to be strong. I know, I know my son wants to be strong. He's exercising. <laughs> but we want to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. But we want to be strong in you, Father, because your power makes our piddly, squiggly little muscles... <sighs> We're like an ant. Oh, an ant can lift ten times their own body weight. I can barely lift half mine. An ant compared to... Uh, a uh, some massive machine I can't think of like a bulldozer <laughs> but, uh, the, the, so our, our power is nothing compared to your power so we don't want to trust in our power at all not one bit I don't want to I don't want to trust in me at all I want to trust in you father and then whenever you tell us something we want to have faith and courage to believe it, and then faith and courage to do it. So, we're praying all these prayers about you showing us stuff to do, so when you start showing us, Father, we're going to have to make a decision whether we're going to do it or not. <laughs> so, Lord, I'm asking for your help right now before we get any specific or special instructions or... Maybe you've given us instructions and we weren't listening very well.
So, I'm asking you to have mercy on us, Father. <laughs> and if we're not listening, if we're not paying attention, if we're not, or even if we're like, ah, I don't want to do that, Lord, That's that sounds scary. Scary. God, that you would strengthen us by your power. And we pray the old Acts 4.29 prayer. Father, give us boldness to speak your word while you extend your hand to heal and signs and wonders take, take place. place through the name of your holy child, Jesus. Ooh, I love that. Your holy child. And we're your holy child now. You said that we're your children and that you've made us holy and righteous by the blood of the Lamb. So now we can be your holy child like Jesus was, is. We can be your holy child, or we are your holy child, and so we want those signs and wonders to take place uh, as we are bold to proclaim your word. So we ask you to direct our steps, Father, today. Um, We don't want to be afraid. We don't want to be uh, hesitant. Mm -hmm. We don't want to hold anything back. But we want to do what you you tell us to do today, what you're leading us to do, Holy Spirit. Because we, we declare that we are led by the Spirit of God, that we are your sheep, and we hear your voice, and the voice of the stranger we will not follow. So I thank you, Father, for speaking larger and louder than ever before. And, and Lord, I thank you for giving us confidence. We want to maintain confidence. We want to speak the truth of your word. We want to agree with it. We want to say it with our mouths out loud. And anything the devil tries to throw in our brains, we're going to say no. But we're going to listen to you, Lord. Because you are good. And your mercy endures forever. <laughs> That's a long time, forever. Um, we have no even concept of that. But you said your mercy was going to last forever. So we say, thank you, Father. Yes! <laughs> yes, that's great that your mercy endures forever. Because we need it. We certainly need it, fresh and new this morning. Uh, you said your mercy is new every morning. <gasps> oh, excuse me. So we just, I just declare it over my house, over my wife, my son, my daughters, my household. We just declare that your mercy is great over us today. And Father, I ask that you open a portal while we're praying. I ask that, that this great cloud of witnesses that is surrounding us, that they'll have access to us. And that we will have access to them. Even. We'd love to talk to some of them. That'd be fine too. Or, or some of these messenger angels. Uh, we hear these stories of these messenger angels coming and talking to people like Joseph and Mary and Daniel and John and just a gazillion people in the Bible. Gideon and Samson and all these people that talk to angels. Well, Father, if it will bless us, if it will help us, and we will be more successful, then we would love to talk to an angel too. And listen to what he has to say. Uh, and then you'll have to give us grace, especially if it's something completely in left field that we had no idea was going on. Uh, you'll have to, you'd have to give us grace and understanding. But uh, anyway, I'm, I'm calling on your name, Jesus. I'm calling on the name of the Lord. You said that if we would call unto you, you would answer us. And show us great and mighty things that we don't know. So I'm asking you to show my son great and mighty things today. Even today. And my wife, great and mighty things. Even today. I want to see great and mighty things today, Father. And I, I pray for the sparrows barn that they'll see great and mighty things. And uh, uh, Miss Erin, that she'll... Uh, Publish some, some, some of these incredible dreams <laughs> now that she's back in connection. So, Father, we're, we are anticipating 
wonderful, amazing things. Now we know there's some scary stuff coming up, but we're not going to think about that. We're going to focus our attention on the amazing, incredible things that you're showing us about yourself, about the Word of God, about the church, about uh, prayer, about our position in Christ, about love, about one, uh, signs and wonders and miracles, the gifts being poured out on the body, all these amazing things that you're showing us. That's where our focus is today. We want to set our minds. Uh, Colossians chapter 3 says, set your minds on things above, not on things on the earth, where our life is hidden in Christ, in God. So that's where I, I want to be like my friend Dave. I want to stay hidden. <laughs> he says, stay hidden. So I'm going to stay in you, Jesus. I'm going to stay hidden in you. And we want to put on that helmet of salvation. Put on that breastplate of righteousness. Gird our loins about with truth. Take up the sword of the Spirit and the shield of faith. And we, I guess that means we're soldiers. <laughs> if we're putting on battle gear and protective equipment and offensive weapons, then that means we're involved in a fight. So we want to fight this good fight this fight of faith that we win, that we have won. So we want to we want to battle lawfully. We want to battle righteously. We want to fight according to uh, the rules you have established, Father. And we know that if we follow your rules, the devil loses. Our dad is the umpire. <laughs> And we get as many pitches as we need till we hit a home run. Well, that's what Marilyn Hickey says. <laughs> so, Father, I thank you that you're the umpire and that you decide and you determine uh, the destiny and the course of our lives. So we just humbly submit our will and uh, our uh, authority and our jurisdiction, whatever, whatever jurisdictional uh, rights and that we have as men on this earth. Father, I just yield them to you. I say, we want to follow you. We want to take that authority that you've given us, that jurisdiction, and we want to implement it to the maximum that we can accomplish what your desire for us is. So I thank you for giving us courage and boldness and giving us wisdom. Uh, you said we were to be as wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Father, we want to walk in your wisdom. We want to overwhelm the enemy with the truth of the Word of God, with our jurisdictional superiority, that we have been made uh, in the very image of God. We have been made righteous by the blood of the Lamb. And so you have given all power and all authority to the body of Christ. So we want to step out as the legs, as the feet, as the hands. We want to, we want to do the work of the kingdom. We want to destroy the works of the devil. So Father, I just declare that. That we are going to destroy the works of the devil. Father, if there's, if there's anything that's blocking us and preventing us from accomplishing what I've just prayed, I ask that you show us and reveal it to us. That you give us revelation today. Uh, or you could tell my, my mom or my dad or uh, my neighbors <laughs> or my friends or our relatives, or, or all the people on this list. Start telling them, the people that come to our house church, our home fellowship, <laughs> Lord, let today be the day that they begin to have a revelation from you, that their hearts are flooded with the, with the truth of heaven, flooded 
with uh, operational information <laughs> for this plan you've got going up. I wonder, I wonder if God has a name for this last day's operation. I'm sure he does. Uh, sure he <clears throat> operation Apocalyptica. Or something. If he has some, if the angels talk about it in hushed terms. So, Father, whatever this operation you've got going, it's probably like rescuers down under or something. <laughs> But you're going to rescue the human race from the, from the clutches of the devil. And then you're going to wipe out all the resistance, all those who hate you. And I just can't imagine that, Father. Why would anyone hate you? I just, I don't, I don't know how it's set up. So it probably has something to do with the Satan mixed his seed in the human race here. And, and, I guess that's who the tares are. The Bible talks about the wheat and the tares. Are they going to grow side by side until the angels come and rip them out at the harvest, at the very, very end? So, so Father, we want to we want to declare our heart's desire this morning is to come with you. And if and if you're getting ready to do that Teva rapture, that uh, preliminary catching away of, of uh, harvesting saints, people who want to participate in the harvest. If, if that's today, then we want to come with you. We want to go. I want to participate in the harvest. I want to help. I want to do whatever I can do. And if my, if my wife or my son or my, my daughters or any, my family, anybody else that wants to come, then, we, then Yahoo, let's go. Let's be transformed. Uh, out of the weakness of our flesh and out of the weakness of our minds and be uh, this mighty, terrible army that you're raising up, Father, to go forth and defeat the enemy and cast out the devils and raise the dead and heal the sick and preach the gospel to every person. You said that the gospel would be preached to every person and then the end would come. Mm -hmm. So we want to participate with you, Father. And as you reveal this, as you open our eyes, as you open up the eyes of the body of Christ, as we begin to understand and we begin to see and we begin to know what your plan is and what you're going to do, uh, we just want to participate with you. We want, to, we want to beat back the forces of darkness through the name of Jesus and the blood of the Lamb because it's certainly not anything that we can do. <laughs> But it's what, what you have already done for us. So we stand. And like you said in Ephesians 6, after we, pr after we put on that full armor of God and after we pray in the Holy Ghost, having done all, we stand. So that's what we want to do, Father, this morning, is we want to stand. We want to take a stand for you. Uh, we want to be bold as a lion. And... Uh, Go forth and uh, join with the whole family of God. Uh, there's, there's millions, I think there's millions of people out there who are praying like this, who are believing, who are calling on the name of Jesus, who are, who are laying aside all the weights and the sins that try to hold us down and ensnare us and run the race that you've set before us, Father. So thank you for helping us do that today. Now I want to I want to ditto all those prayers that I've been praying for the for this list of folks and all those who uh, whose heart is with us, Lord. I know there's there's probably millions of Christians whose heart is for you and who are for the church and who are for the body of Jesus. But they just don't know what to do. They, they're going to a bad church. <laughs> or they've not had good teaching. Or they don't have access uh, to the information that uh, other people have. Father, I thank You uh, for joining us all together in this massive uh, paradigm shift. This massive last day's move that You're going to do. And sweep through the earth by Your Spirit. 
and uh, put out that call for every person who wants to be part of the kingdom that they'll that no one will misunderstand and no one will say that they did not know uh, and I don't, I don't know how all that's going to work but I just declare that and I ask uh, for wisdom I ask for healing I ask for peace and joy I ask for revelation to come upon this list of folks and our, our YouTube friends as well uh, this this prayer is for you as for you as well that all of these people Lord uh, on this list and on in our YouTube audience that their hearts would be moved that their their eyes would be open to the light of the glorious gospel that their bodies would be healed top to bottom front to back inside and out every toxin every poison every uh, germ disease a DNA anomaly everything man-made or devil-made or uh, something that was uh, uh, rearranged in the fall that all of those things would be reversed in the lives and the bodies of these families that I'm praying for and with all of my heart father I desire that life flow through them and to them every one of them no one excluded that Jesus paid the price for everybody that there is no partiality with you father and that you love everyone you are love and you want us all to come into the knowledge of the truth so I just thank you for doing that I thank you for revealing yourself to them I thank you for revealing yourself to us <laughs> and so that's how I'm going to look at it I'm just going to keep the faith switch in the on position that I have revelation I hear the voice of Jesus I am led by the Holy Spirit so I pray that for all these people that they'll agree that they'll come into that knowledge as well. And they'll begin to declare that over themselves. That we hear your voice, Father. We know what we're supposed to do because we have heard you clearly. <coughs> we thank you for directing us. We thank you for instructing us. We thank you for rebuking us and correcting us and using our brothers and sisters to us uh, speak uh, a corrective word over us so that we can uh, not stumble down the wrong pathways. So I just thank you for that. So I just uh, want to say goodbye to the our YouTube friends uh, so we can pr protect the privacy of these folks. And uh, we just thank you and praise you, Father, for each and every one who's listening. Uh, and we just speak life to them and peace as in the Holy Spirit today.